Hello and welcome to Mom Talk. I created Mom Talk a while ago, more than a year ago. Can you believe that? I created it more than a year ago so we can have a community of moms, those who support moms, as well as those who are interested in mother- motherhood. We can all come together so that we can talk about topics where we think we may be the only ones going through this situation or just provide support. And then pretty awesome woman where we have different expertise that we can share amongst ourselves. So that's why I highlight a guest mom expert or someone within my network that I feel that is, or someone I don't know, because there's been people reaching out. We have a couple of good people lined up that can add value to this community. And just know that it's a safe space, right? We do this every fourth Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And you don't know who I am. I am Crystal Galladay, the host of Mom Talk, also known as the Fun Finder for Education or Coach Chris MG. Um, And you can check me out and learn more about me on my website. But today we are going to talk about single parenting, particularly single moms. And then um, the guest mom that we have here is Tamika Glenn. She's an author as well as a financial wealth expert and consultant and coach so that she is going to talk about her experience, her journey, and we're just going to get a chance to learn from her and just what she brings to the table, as well as we're going to talk too. You know, there's always an opportunity for questions and answers. And I know in the chat, we also talked about some things prior to us coming on live, but I'm so happy that all of you are here. And Tamiko, if you can tell us more about yourself so that we all can get to know you. Hello. So I'm Tamiko, um, single mom. My kids are actually in the background doing stuff now. I have one that's doing that's tutoring in the at the moment. Um, one that's drawing, and the other one getting ready for bed. But um, I didn't start out as a single parent. I actually was married, um, and you know, got a divorce, and so that's how I became a single mother. Um, but um, it, it's still, you know, the, my kids actually give me joy. And so I enjoy doing, you know, well, I wouldn't say I enjoy doing it alone, but um, I definitely enjoy parenting them. Awesome. So um, care to tell us a little bit more about um, just balancing it all, like the difference from having two parents in the household to now one and you have three, like I only have one. So my king of kindergarten, I, and, and he keeps me busy. So how was it with managing three? It is, it can be very challenging. Um, and it can sometimes feel, um, you know, like you're alone. Um, I think I, I rely heavily on God, um, you know, prayer. Um, but I actually have a good support system. So I have like my parents, my sister, um, even my children's pa- um, other parent, you know, they're, they're good su- support system as well. So that really helps out a lot. But, um, you know, with the, like the whole pandemic and homeschooling and all that kind of stuff, it did get really, um, really hairy and really hard. You know, there were days where I was like, oh, my gosh, I don't you know, I felt like maybe I wasn't doing enough, you know, or that I was falling short because, you know, here they are at home 24, you know, 24 seven now. And, um, you know, I'm working at home. And so it it got kind of challenging. It really did. So how do you get through it? Because I know you join me in the mornings every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday. I host a group on Clubhouse called Miracle Morning. Start your day off with intention. It's a productivity room. And I know sometimes you mentioned that you're doing your schedule for your family. So can you speak on that? Yes. So um, I live by a planner. So uh, (laughs) I put everything in the planner, um, everything from, you know, I plan out um, workouts. I plan out meals. I don't always stick to the meals, but I try to plan out meals. Um, so meal prepping, all that stuff. Um, I plan out, you know, their, um, my son is in basketball as well as track. Um, 
And so I, just, I have to plan. I've got a plan. Um, I like to get up early. Um, for me, it's really, I, I like it because um, I get an opportunity to kind of have the, have some time to myself because once they are up, I mean, it, it's, it's out the window. There is no me time once they're up. No, I definitely understand that with being like, once your children are up, everybody's up because it's kind of like, your time is not yours anymore, <laughs> pretty much. And you have to make sure you make that time for yourself um, because if you're not any good, then you're not going to be able to give to anyone else. So for tips for those who are single parents, like what would you give them in regards to being able to do it and, and being able to have that energy and just like, how are you getting by? Like, let's speak on that. Okay. So I would say, um, definitely having a support system is very important because, um, you can't do it by yourself. It's, it's impossible to do it by yourself. You really do need a village to help. Um, even if it's, you know, something as simple, like today, my son, um, had to run track, had a track meet and my girls, you know, the, um, the track meet, they said only two, two people could come. So all three of us couldn't go, you know, so my parents were able to stop in and help, you know, while I went to do that, they were able to come in and help. So it's, it's really first, it's definitely important to have a support system. Um, and, um, to have, you know, even friends, you know, if you don't have family members that are close by to have friends that are, um, and people that you can trust with your children that can help as well. So that's something, um, that is very much needed. And I know when it comes to me, right. Mm -hmm. And I know I have um, my husband here um, and then I have friends. But like before, my mom used to come down and she's no longer with us. And then my aunt used to come down and now it's COVID. And it's like, how do you out? Like, I know you're talking about family um, and you have the family there. There's some people that don't have family and the trust issue. And it's not that I don't trust some of my friends because like there are some true blues that I'm like, all right, like we have to do this. Do you mind? And they're like, girl, I don't mind. Like you should have asked me a long time ago. But um, if if anyone has like vetting, um, vetting tips or do you have any vetting tips? Have you had people outside of your family watch your kids and like how does that work? Because um, I'm, I'm learning to get more comfortable, especially with him being older. But and then that asking for help aspect, that was hard for me. So do you have any tips on that um, for myself as well as? Um, I would say definitely ask a lot of questions. So um, my one of the things, so my children, um, their parent, you know, parents have, um, and so I have my, it's two dads. Um, so my, they have, other people that they're, you know, that they're involved with, um, and things like that. And so, um, I, I feel more comfortable if I'm able to ask questions, you know, well, you know, who is this person? Um, and if I can get to know them a little bit, you know, try to build a relationship with that person as well. Um, and, but I would say asking questions and talking to them and trying to, trying to build a relationship with, um, individuals that are going to be around your children and that, um, you know, are going to be able to, you know, help you with them. You make a great point. Um, Cause I know um, Shanae in the chat, she had mentioned um, her PTA ladies help her out. And there's people that you have around you that you're building relationships with. Um, I know like there's um, different mommy groups that I'm in locally, as well as um, far um, where I've been becoming more comfortable with them. Um, so you're right about that. Um, and I do like the schedule um, with working from home. I know we have some educators in here and um, some other professions and stuff like that. Um, working from home, as well as having a distance learning aspect, even if it is a hybrid model, is tough. It is definitely tough. So from my aspect, I do want to remind you to make that time for yourself even if it is just an extra 10 minutes in the bathroom, um, taking a bath or something like that, because you want to make sure that you are sane. 
like just having your peace of mind is important. Um, yes, and um, I see in the chat, um, it was said definitely ask who all over there, like who who's in that in that vicinity that will be watching your child. Um, I, ideally, for me, I would like to you know be in that surrounding at least you know once to to just get a feel of the layout and just the people and and stuff like that. So we have definitely good dialogues. I also watch how your child interacts with the individual. Because, oh, that's good because your ch children are so pure when it comes to um, like reading people's vibes where you're like, say hi. And, and the kids be like, yeah, I, I, and some kids have to warm up. I know my friends and even me, um, I, I warm up to people. And then after you probably can't shut me up. Um, but um, you, you definitely know your child and can feel their vibe. Um, it says kids can be a good judge of character, character and that helped me. Kids are like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> yes. And that's true. I, that's true. I That was something that I definitely, um, I didn't um, like force my children to, uh, you know, act outside of themselves. You know what I mean? I let them be themselves and let them, um, what I guess, feel for themselves, you know, um, to be able to decipher and to discern you know, who they wanted to be around. My my little one, oh my gosh, she would look at people. <laughs> she would look at people and she'd be like, mm, you know, no. <laughs> and so um, at first, when, I, when she first did it, I was like, oh my God, you know. <laughs> but then I felt like it was necessary for her to be able to feel comfortable for herself so that she could discern who she needed to be around and who she didn't. Because I, if I'm not around her, then, you know, she needs to be able to judge that within herself. Right. No, I definitely feel what you're saying. So um, for those who are not single parents, um, I do have a question for you. Like, how can we support a single parent? Because, you know, it, take, it takes a village to raise a child. Uh, it took a village to raise me, even though both of my parents were in my, my life. My dad was in another household, but really like walking distance or a short drive. Um, and I stayed with him on weekends, but like moms need a break. Um, and I can only imagine those who are single parents. And I know like with some groups I'm a part of, um, and even one in my group right now, someone was in the hospital. So we're doing like a meal train um, and we'll do like maybe play dates or something like that. So we can support one another or birthdays, you may celebrate it. But what are some tips that you would say that we can do to support single mothers because we in this together regardless if you have a spouse or not um i think one of the main things i would say is ask you know how they're doing um you know because a lot of times a lot i don't know if people are like me sometimes i'll keep stuff to myself you know i won't tell you know i'll just kind of deal with it on my own so asking you know are you okay you know um how the kids doing you know things like that just to check like in for the on their mental state because it does get a little overwhelming sometimes. And so, um, and sometimes it's good, um, you know, to, to reach out because like I said, I'm not always the one that's gonna just say how I'm feeling or say that I'm having a bad day or, or a bad week. And so it's good if people, you know, kind of come into my little world to pull me out sometimes. And I will say this, people need to listen to how people respond. Because the general response is, oh, I'm okay, I'm good, or yeah, everything's going all right. But sometimes you hear it in that person's voice, like, really? Like, are you good? I know Shanae and I talk frequently, and she's um, here, and, and she can sense that <laughs> with me. Or even like, Kamara, we're in a text, like, you know, just seeing how people respond, or even like Marcio check in. Like, so it's just when you know someone and you just know something sounds off, sometimes you don't want to pry too much because sometimes people need to come to terms or, or, or their own timing. But, and if they don't feel like telling you then, just check up on them. Just put it in, in your calendar or whatever. I'm, I'm going to check up on Crystal uh, tomorrow to make sure she good, good. Like, Because <laughs> I mean, I know like you may see people on social media and, and not saying anything's wrong with me. You, have, you see the highlight reel. Go to my stories, you'll see a little bit more of the real world, right? Um, but, you know, you, you don't know unless you really talk to a person. So that's good. 
Um, I know a child is not cheap, right? <laughs> so even with having a two house income and on paper, everybody else would say, um, you know, two household income is good. It's, um, I know with one is it's less income. So you, you are the financial, a financial wellness coach. So can we speak to that aspect from a, like financial aspect and planning and some things that parents can do, particularly single parents? Yes. So yes, kids are expensive, especially, I think they're more expensive the older that they get than when they are babies. Um, especially when it comes to track practice, you know, um, all these sports, dance, um, braces, all that good stuff, you know, <laughs> they get more and more expensive. Um, but a um, couple of things, one is um, having a budget, you know, having a budget that you stick to on a monthly basis. Um, something else that I like to do is um, I still like to pull out cash and kind of do the envelope method. Um, I like to pay stuff, um, pay it, you know, that way, I'm not swiping my card all the time. It's really easy to swipe. You can swipe yourself to death. You just keep swiping. I'm swiping, swiping myself to death. Over here. <laughs> yeah, you can actually end up spending what you know way too much before you know it. You look up and you're like, "Oh my god!" You know, I I spent a dollar. That was a dollar. You know, but you can before you know it, you can um, like I said, swipe yourself to death. And um, just keeping a budget is really good keeping a budget and actually sticking to it. Another thing that I do is I write out my grocery list before I go to the grocery store. I'll meal plan um, and then I'll go. And I only, a lot of times, majority of the time, not all the time, I try to buy only what's on my list. So any tips for like the whole um, budgeting, certain categories we should have, or like even the shopping, um, sticking to your shopping list, cause that, that doesn't always happen to me unless I do like an Instacart or something. So even those those last minute things kind of add up. They're like, oh, but do you want this? And I'm like, oh, I didn't think about this. So let me add this. So any tips from that perspective, from budgeting categories or any other financial tips and even shopping and staying towards your list? You are, you are mute. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Okay. So as far as um, the budgeting, one, of, I mean, I like to write everything down. Um, I like to write it down as far as um, when it comes to, and again, I, I like to do the envelope method um, to kind of, you know, for whatever bills that I have, say, for example, um, you know, a car payment, car insurance, different things like that. I like to go ahead and pull that money out so that I can pay those bills and then, um, and then, you know, I don't have to worry about swiping my card, uh, you know, a whole lot. I like to go ahead and pull that money out. Um, and then the other thing, what we teach our clients to do is really to only use your bank account for paying, you know, if you don't use the the envelope method, to only use your bank account for um, payments, you know, not to actually save and accumulate money in the bank account. We actually teach our clients to put money in like, Roth IRAs, 401k, you know, things like that, investment vehicles, a money market account, something like that. So are you saying like have an account for specific things? Yes. So like we have, um, we have like emergency funds um, and an emergency fund is anywhere from six to 12 months worth of savings so that if in the event that something was to happen, you know, an emergency came up, you have that money set aside so that you don't have to go and, you know, pull it out of your, your paycheck or, you know, you don't have to use that, more, that money. So, yes. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, so I know you have a book and I know you have your financial services and one lucky participant will be getting um, those things from you, um, a con consultation as well as your book. Can you please speak about your book? So we all will know. And then, those who don't get it, or even that one lucky person that does get it, if they want to support, then they can. Yes. So the name of it is Smile. And this, I don't know if you can see it, but this, this is it. Um, and it's actually a collaboration of other single moms. So there's about 12 single moms in this book that are talking about their story, you know, whether it came, you know, how they became a single parent, um, you know, how their life started, you know, and the struggles that they've they've gone through, things like that, how they're overcoming 
And so um, in the book, I like to, t I talk about like how I became a single parent, um, some of the things that I've encountered as a single parent, um, things from like, you know, I remember when I had to go into the food stamp office, you know, I wasn't expecting that. That's not how I grew up, you know, but to actually have to go and do that was a very humbling experience, you know, and one that I, I you know, like I said, I wasn't expecting it. Um, but I think sharing your story is helpful to other people. Not only does it help you to get healing, but it also helps other people. You know, you never know what other people are going through, um, how similar your story is to them. And so sharing your story helps them, you know, helps them to, to heal as well. That's very true. I know I felt that way when it was my um, domestic violence situation with an ex um, several years ago. Um, right after it happened, I had therapy relocated and all that other stuff. But then my mentor for a program that helped me relocate and provide me with a therapist, and we're going to get on that topic too, um, they had me speak at a conference. And normally I would think, okay, I'm going to be scared or just nervous or whatever. It was very, very empowering to speak and share my story and just receive the, the feedback because you're right. People can learn from your journey and you never know who you're touching um, and, and helping them and giving them hope. And that's why like every day, like on social media, you see I'll share and then I, you know, the, my clubhouse rooms and stuff like that. And then even this outlet here, because I feel like together we can get through this thing called life all all the peaks and valleys of it and everything in between um we can get through it and when you share you know share what you're comfortable with you don't have to divulge your whole story but you do want to um if you share um share what you're comfortable with and just know that you'll probably touch one life it may not be a like it may not be a comment but definitely if you're consistent I've had people like when I stop posting about something, message me like, okay, like, so how's it going with this? <laughs> like, even when I was pregnant, I, I worked out all the way until they were like, okay, you're having your, your child tomorrow. Um, I stopped posting it for a little bit and an ex's mom <laughs> messaged me like, I didn't see your workout video. You all right over there? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I just didn't post it. So you just never know. You never know. So, um, I think we're ready to open the floor for any questions. Are you, you ready for that, Tommy? Yeah, okay. I'm ready for that. <laughs> All right. I know the chat has been um, going, which is awesome. So, oh, so there's a question about savings and investing. Any tips there? And um, ladies, um, one by one, you can come off mute if you want to, um, to verbally ask your questions. Um, so Talitha, I know that question was from you. And um, Tommy, I'll let you take that question. Okay. Um, you said it was about savings and investing. Any tips there outside of 529? Mm -hmm. um, let's see. As far as savings and investing. Um, well, one of the, okay. So we like to educate our clients in, um, as far as investments, um, investing in like mutual funds. Um, a mutual fund is like a pooling of assets. So it's companies, it's multiple companies that pull together their assets. Um, and that way you, you can get a little bit, you know, you have your money in a little bit of everything or different things, depending on the particular mutual fund that you're using. Um, so outside of um, mutual funds, um, the other thing, you know, maximizing like your, if you have like your employer um, offers, matches um like a company match for 401ks or things like that to actually participate in that and we always um tell our clients to like match at least to um what the company matches so if they match up to five percent we say you know mm -hmm. contribute up to five percent so that they can match Thank that you. i'm sorry that was my question hi <laughs> hi um so I, I just, I'll take it a little bit further. So I have, um, I was really asking about specifically for children and I should have been clear about that. So, um, you know, what vehicles, like, is it, would I open like a mutual fund account in her name? Would it just be for mine? Like, I think, um, yeah, I have a 529 for her, but I just want to, you know, find some ways to just take it a little bit further. 
Okay. Yeah, there's um, other vehicles. We have UGMA accounts. We have different kind of um, college savings accounts. So I don't know. Are you wanting like a like a college account, um, something that she can touch now or something that she can touch later on? Later. Okay. Yeah. So we have definitely um, different types of accounts um, so that the client, so that the, you know, when they get of age, they can have that money. Um, there's different, different vehicles. Um, like I said, UGMA um, and I'm drawing a blank, but we have, yeah. So we have different, different ones. And I'll chime in here really quick. Um, I know for me, um, I've explored the custodial account um, and a custodial account is an account where you're on it, but your child is on it too. Um, and I did it through like E-Trade. I'm not sure if Tamika, if your company um, offers something like that, a custodial account. And with that, um, I'm investing on my prince's behalf. And um, with that, for me, my goal is to utilize and well, invest in things that we use because it's like the circle of life <laughs> kind of situation. Um, and one of my friends who's in the financial world told me about that. And I was like, oh, that's that's cool. So it's um, money that I'm doing for him and setting aside for him and investing for him so that he'll have it. I mean, we do have the 529 plan. And then even, um, I know there's a question about life insurance. If Tamiko, we want to take it there next um, after we figure out if uh, to lead that we fully answered your question, but um, with the insurance that I had, and actually the person that's coming on next week is a person that um, educated me on my life insurance, as well as the affinity program that we have um, associated with the life insurance that is helping towards um, a college fund as well. Um, so, um, Talitha, did we answer your question? Yes, that was helpful. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Uh, so, Tommy, the next question is from Keisha. She asks, life insurance, does your company suggest or do you have any idea should we get life insurance on our children or is it not worth it? So I'll let you answer it, then I'll, I'll add my sprinkle. <laughs> okay, so we do um, encourage parents to get life insurance on their children. Um, we So what we tell our clients is that, um, one you want to we we offer term insurance we usually offer it because we we feel like it's the best for the client um and we can go into that you know later but um as far as coverage on the kids you do want coverage on the kids simply because if something were to happen to the kids you don't want to have to feel like you got to rush back to work you know and not be able to properly grieve you know the loss of your child so you want to have at least something so that you know, you can take a week, couple of weeks off, you know, or more. Um, and then not only that, but putting insurance on them also preserve, well, it um, protects their insurability. So say they, you know, are healthy now, um, you know, in 10, 15 years, you know, they may not be so healthy. Say they come down with some kind of diagnosis. Um, well, at least they're protected. And so they have that, that insurability that's protected. Does that so make I sense? Do want, oh, yeah. Keisha, make sense? Yeah. I know you yes. Okay, cool. Um, I know from, and I'm talking from my experience, I'm no expert, but my mom prepared me for what I do now with my friends. And I've learned from some of her mistakes. But when it came to life insurance, she had life insurance. She had even the, what is it? The bonds and all that other stuff, which really doesn't like, it's not the best investment these days that people um, talk about. But when it came from life insurance, um, as Tommy was saying, when you get it for your child at a young age, it is a lower rate. Like I have life insurance for myself and for my parents and the rate is a difference, um, but also it's that peace of mind. And I, I'm even taking it a step further for life planning. I said after my birthday last year, but we're in a global pandemic, so I didn't move forward with it. But my mom had everything planned out for her afterlife, for like her celebration, as in where she was laid to rest, that was already paid for. The tombstone was already paid for. She had the insurance um, that, that covered things. She already knew the funeral home. So just that alleviated me from being her only child 
to having to figure out all those things. So I just added my twist to it because she was like, okay, I don't want to be the fuss. I, I, I don't want to have it at a church. I want to make it easy. And I celebrated her in the way that was best for how I knew my mom. So we had a celebration of life. Her line dancing crew came, um, celebrated her. We had music piping. And then also for a repass, I didn't have it where it was like, oh, we're doing a community room. You bring this and you bring that and you donate this. I had actually had a, a, a restaurant that um, was like a jazz feel and I had a catered with the food that we eat. <laughs> and so everybody could come and chill. So just think about the whole, your life. And I know we don't want to think about burying our child, burying our child or them burying us, but it's life. Um, we really have to um, know that we have these two dates and, and we already had a first date. Our second date is coming and we don't know when it is. So you want to prepare for that. Um, also live life in between. So um, we're talking about financially, like planning for those things. Like springtime is our time to celebrate. <laughs> um, some of you know what we're going to be celebrating. And plus, like, um, you know, I look at the wintertime as hybriding and getting work done and stuff like that. So plan for those things. I know we can, you know, it's limited to what we can do now, but um, definitely invest the time and the, and the resources into what you're going to enjoy for your life and then also planning too for the what ifs and the tomorrows and stuff like that right and you you made a good point um as far as like planning because you know we it's becoming like a, a huge trend where people are you know not properly pre preparing themselves or not properly protecting themselves and their families and they're you know you see a lot of um gofundmes and you know stuff like that fish fries or things like that. And it doesn't have to be like that. Uh, if y'all see my prints do something like that, even though I plan to live beyond a hundred knocking on wood. If you ever see something coming from my way or go find me because somebody passed, like, just, just tell me, Chris, like, what's, mm, we not doing that. And, and my, my prince is not doing that. So just had to throw that out there to let all the aunties know. <laughs> so I had to say that. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah. So how can people keep in contact with you, Tamika? Okay. So I'm on like every, well, I'm on Facebook and Instagram and in Clubhouse. Um, but on Instagram, I am Ms. Tommy and that's M-Z-T-O-M-I-I. -I. Um, email address is Ms. Tommy at live.com. And um business you know i have a, the website is www.primerica.com forward slash tamiko and love it's actually love on there oh cool so um what's next for you i know you have the book i know you're doing your wellness coaching and you know being the awesome mom that you are so what else is next for you so i talked to my coach today um i have a personal trainer and, um, you know, quarantine and all of that. And so I've picked up some quarantine pounds that I've got to get rid of. Um, and so I'm actually pre going to be pre preparing for my third um, fitness competition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what? I'm excited about that. Um, I know there was, wait, talk to us about wellness coaching. I don't think you do wellness coaching. You do wealth coaching, right? Right, right. Well, Financial right. wealth. Mm -hmm. um, so Keisha, if you heard that, I'm a, I may have misspoke or you may have misunderstood. I do wellness coaching, so we can talk about that um, if you want. But but yeah, we all have to take care of ourselves, our external and internal and our mental as well. So you can definitely join us Monday, Wednesday, and Sat Saturday at 5 a.m. And I know, Keisha, you have joined us um, in Shanae on Clubhouse for my Miracle Morning, Start Your Day Off With Intention room. Um, there's a lot of um, great things that happen there. I'm actually the first room on the Miracle Morning Club, um, which I'm a leader in the Miracle Morning community. And it's after the book by Hal Alrod. I actually read that book, I wanna say eight years ago when I started my entrepreneurial journey. And with this room is productivity. So we all come with our goals and we work on it. If you come in after the first 15 minutes or so to be silent, and then at the end of the hour, we talk about our progress as well as leave it any parting words. And 
Tamiko, you've been rocking with me for like the past four months since I've been doing this. Yeah, I love it. You know, um, I don't remember what room we were in when I heard you mention the um, Miracle Morning. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, because I read, I've recent, um, I think it was last year I read the book and, you know, I immediately started putting together the savers and, you know, doing that. And so it was really I just love the fact that there was somebody else that I could connect with that was on the same page, you know, that read the book and was doing the same thing. So, yes, I'm, I'm, I love it. And then, you know what? Um, two things. Um, when you go on my profile on Clubhouse, there is a free resource that you can utilize, um, different Miracle Morning free resources. So definitely go there. I'm, I'm just Crystal Galladay on there. And I was going to say one other thing. You inspired me. When it comes to you are doing a countdown, 40 day countdown devotional, and you reminded me like one of the goals I got saved this year. So one of the goals I want to do is read the Bible in the year. Well, we know that's a big book and like life happened. I got two weeks behind and it's like more days. And I'm like, no, my dedication to myself when we meet is to go through my devotional. So I've been knocking out like three days at a time when we have our sessions. Um, and that's another reason why I changed it to like throughout the whole hour, I'm um, welcoming people. It's like, I need to work on me too. <laughs> and I, and that accountability there is priceless. And we made a lot of great connections and we've been helping each other out with different things. Cause I know one mom came one time and it was something she was dealing with. And we talked about that. So, um, so definitely join us if you want. And Thursdays at 6 PM, I talk about college tips for prep, um, success in college and thriving after college. But Kamora has a question and comment on the, in the chat. He said, fitness competition, that's right up my alley. So let's let's dive into that. We're here. So let's talk about that. I know about here. the competitions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so um, the way that I got started, I've, I've actually, I have it on my vision board. I've put it on my vision board like years ago. My son was He's 13 now. He was probably one when I originally put that on my vision board. Um, and you know, you know how you kind of, sometimes you kind of forget about stuff. And so, um, I actually went through a ugly breakup and I was, and I would listen to Eric Thomas all the time. And so one of the things he said was like, you know, give 120 and something. And so that, that particular year I decided to give 120% in my health. And so, um, I said, I'm going to give 120 and I took, I made a challenge to myself to go to the gym 120 days straight. Oh, and so, straight. yes. And oh, so, um, okay. rain, snow, whatever. I want, you I want to be Kamara. Right, 120 <laughs> days in a row. <laughs> yes. No matter what came up, you know, I was like, okay, I'm giving 120. And when I went, um, as I started to go, I started to think like, you know, Hmm that idea for fitness competitions start to come up again. And then I actually ran into somebody who um, did them. And so I, I was like, well, how do you get started? He told me how to get started, connected me with the coach and it's been on and popping from then. So, Ooh. and I, I mean, I love it. Nice. Did you see like a very big, a big difference immediately? Um, It took, well, I, t I saw a difference as far as, uh, so I had a couple of different coaches first. Um, and my first coach, um, the, his, his, um, the way that he did it, uh, he had me like immediately jump into like cutting everything. And I did that, but for me that it didn't work. It, that mm -hmm. didn't work. Just cutting out everything. I basically. So like when you get closer to your show date, um, you do get to a point where you're like eating tilapia and um, asparagus and Bold sweet potatoes. Yeah, yes, yes, <laughs> a lot of that. Um, and so, but he started me out like that. And I had like 20 weeks, 20 plus weeks, 24 weeks or so to compete, you know, before my competition. So just imagine, you know, I mean, that's a long time to eat yeah. that. Um, so it didn't work. My coach my current coach and the coach that actually coached me through my first competition, she actually took a different approach and she kind of started with cutting just a little bit, um, dropping the calories just a little bit, uh, and then, and tweaking stuff just little by little. And that I was very much successful, you know, more successful. Um, I actually made it to the stage twice, um, through her help. Oh, 
Thank you. I didn't win yet, but look, you will, you will. Yes, thank you. <laughs> now, Kamara and I are in a Fit Mommy group together, uh, Fit Mommy Chat, and um, we definitely um, work out and each other. Yeah. yeah. And then Kamora like is good with the healthy food. Like I'd be like, sis, just mail that to me because I'm, <laughs> I'm not. My thing is not gonna look like that, and I'm not going to fifty million stores with this to get this stuff. Um, so it's definitely inspiring. And Kamora, I can see you doing something like that if that's something you want to do. Yeah, I don't know, but you know, some days like today, I made garlic strip, and it was like swimming and butter. Little James was like, "This tastes like it's from a restaurant." I was over here dancing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like that you know you have to treat yourself um wait don't treat yourself don't cheat yourself that's what one of my um fitness mentors says so he has a cookie like once a week or he may have a donut but best believe outside of that one cheat meal or cheat day he's hard with it um so I remember that and then also like pushing yourself or pacing yourself when it comes to working out. Sorry, I'm not doing it. No oh, no worries. No worries. What I was saying was um, treat yourself. Don't cheat yourself. So like, it could be that one day where you have that meal that tastes like the restaurant, like Lil J would say. Right. Um, Swimming in the but, butter. <laughs> yeah. But then other times, like you hard with it, like you, you know, going with it. Cause um, I'm saying one of my fitness um, mentors um, and celebrity trainers he he eats a cookie or a donut every now and then. Um, so, you know, but you're not going to see me on the stage doing that. You know, you may see me on a beach somewhere soon. <laughs> uh, but, but I'm not. Yeah, um, that sounds like a plan. Oh, Shanae, you going to do the 120 days of workout? <laughs> Work it out. I could see you doing that and having your squad do that. Um, but thank you, Kamora, um, for chiming in on that topic. Um, because that's my self-care. Yes, girl. Yes. And I, I see um, two moms who are doing this virtual learning because it's only been three days for me. And I'm just like, Lord Jesus. <laughs> <Take the wheel. laughs> it's definitely a process. Um, I'm thinking about summer. Like, yeah, I signed up for the first thing this this today. Um, I just don't know about the rest right now. That's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother yeah. story with the summer. Um, so any any other questions or comments for our guest mom expert here today, Tamiko? Because if not, we'll go into the, the raffle. But if you do have it, it's your time. So I know, Kamora, you had your um, mic open. Okay, maybe not. Oh yeah, um, I just turned it off, so I wanted to make too much noise over here. I'm all too oh, okay. <laughs> no problem. Um, so and my Tamiko, hair is, is tied up, so I'm not coming on video. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's you don't have to at all. Um, <laughs> yeah. um so Tamiko, um, are there any parting words that you want to leave before we go into this raffle and um, do a quick round robin? Because I love to hear what's going on with any everyone if they have something they have to share. Um, just that as far as single parenting and single moms, you know, connecting with other single moms, just like a check, check on them, make sure they're doing good, you know, um, definitely be a good listening ear for them. You know, that is always helpful. Um, from the, the, uh, exercise and all of that, if you guys are up for the challenge, you know, I'm up to do it again. You know, like I said, I'm getting ready to prepare. Um, I think my, I start my prep, um, April 11th, but you know, I'm all for, you know, having a, a support system or, a, you know, a, an accountability group that want to, you know, they have goals and, you know, we can um, connect with each other and talk and chat and, you know, encourage each other to get out there and do something through 30 minutes of something, you know, meal prep that day, meal prep for the week or whatnot, you know, so connecting with someone that's wanting to do that as well. Well, sign me up um, in regards to the accountability and, and moving and doing something. And then we could also use our um, my room to um, do like date today's day one or today's whatever so that we can um, just remind ourselves if you didn't move yet and get up and move. And and I know some people may want to use that time that we have to, to exercise in the morning. It is early, um, but 
well, you're not the only ones. <laughs> we do it every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday for the past four months. So you can join us. Um, so you had your parting words, um, and I'm so happy that you were able to do this um, because just that energy we had in the, the Miracle Morning Room that I host um, has been contagious, and I wanted to bring you here and then also myself learn more about you. And I'm excited for one lucky participant to get a financial con consultation with you as well as your book. So everybody's name I put in the hat, my favorite color hat, hence the glasses. Um, and I'll be picking a winner here. The winner is <laughs> Keisha. Oh, it looks the right way now. So Keisha, um, if you can um, private message uh, Tamiko and provide her with your address. It, oh, and you put. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Oh my God, I have never won anything before in my life. It's your time, boo. It's your time. It, it's oh, congratulations. Oh my God, wait. <laughs> let me practice my humility. Thank you so much. I am so happy to be No, here. you can you can do that, that ah, all of that. <laughs> oh, hold on. I think you put yourself on mute, Keisha. I don't know if you wanted to compose yourself. Yeah, no, I did. I won. I wanted to compose myself. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. Thank so, you. Um, uh, Tamiko, do you want to add any more about... Um, <laughs> Shanae said, do the, do the wave, the Miss America wave, Keisha. Um, Tamiko, is there anything more that you want to add about your offerings um, for what Keisha won and what other people can contact you about? Yes. Yeah, so um, she's going to be getting a book. She'll be getting a copy of the book. My daughter moved it, but she'll be getting a copy of the book. And so she'll get the opportunity to see um, all of the other mothers, their stories as well. Um, and then the consultation is a free 30 minute consultation. Um, and, you know, um, I can also be reached. I can. Can we give phone numbers? I can give my phone number as well. If that. Um. It, it's. We're gonna share it out. If oh, it's okay. a business number, if you want, you can. You want to put it in the chat? You can. The chat's okay. not gonna be shared out to the world. So okay. it's all on your comfort level. But okay. the information you told me to share with the list, I will share those things. But okay. I say put the number in the chat unless you want anybody who watches it when it's public. No, to... no I'll put it in the <laughs> chat. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> So cool. So anybody could contact you that wants to in the ways that you mentioned earlier. And if you're here, you're getting her number. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so um, thank you for doing that. And I like to do a round robin to see if anyone has anything that is going on. Like I know several people have something going on or something coming up. Um, so if you don't say it, I'll shout you out. If you're comfortable with it, or just put in the chat, Crystal, don't don't mention it. Um, but you know, I like to share um, what we're doing um, so we all can support one another. So I'll leave it free reign right now to see if anybody wants to open up and talk about what they have going on and how we can support. It. Keisha. <laughs> Uh, Kamora. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> uh, I will share. Well, um, oh, okay. No, go ahead. You can go. But Talitha, um, you were first. Yeah, go ahead, Talitha. Sorry, I had already muted myself again. Um, I am launching a uh, virtual assistance uh, business while I'll be helping small businesses with their daily admin, um, and that will be launching very soon. My website, my, well, my uh, Instagram is paradigm underscore assist, and stay tuned. Exciting. Feel free to put it in the chat so we have it spelled correctly. Thank you, and I'm excited about that, too. I think I'm going to be your first client, unless somebody beat me, too. That's why. <laughs> so, uh, Keisha, you have next. 
tomorrow I'm going to be taking part on a panel speaking about the importance of um, history and education. So, I mean, that's something if you guys are available, please come and check it out. What time is it tomorrow, Keisha? And on what platform? I think at seven. Um, I think it's going to be on Facebook Live. So I'm, I'm not really sure yet, but once I figure it out, I'll post it on page also. Okay, and definitely tag me so I can um, share it on my end too. And that business, Talitha, sounds exciting and promising. Thank you. And congratulations to you too. Anything else you want to share, Keisha? Um, no. Okay, cool. Um, let me see who else is in here. Uh, Kamara, is the cookbook still out for sale and for supporting? The cookbook is still out. I'm actually just sitting here working on now. We ordered a buff order. So um, um, actually... The diversity chair at my school, and I'm the vice president of the PTO. It's a um, French school, and we have a diversity cookbook, and we have recipes from about fifty, um, maybe fifty-four different families from many different countries. It's very nice, and all of the um, proceeds are going to the diversity camp. So let me put my camera on really quick just to show you the book. One second, let me see. Don't look at me. Sorry. <laughs> Nice. I'm excited. I placed my order, ladies. Yes, and it's shipped. So um, we're going to be sending them out the first week of April. I'm just going to open it up and show you a page. It's super cute. Yeah. So what's that about to be a golden yogurt? Mm. Yeah. Have fun and turmeric. Turmeric out here is really good for you. Yeah, so it, it's super cute. I'm excited. So if anyone's interested, sorry, this is me with no makeup, face wash, hair pinned up. It's all good. <laughs> Scary. You I'm going off a line. <laughs> you beautiful, boo. You beautiful. <laughs> yeah, if anyone's interested, definitely let me know. I would love to mail you a copy. $19.99 for the kids. For the kids. Um, and it's all it's all in English, correct? No, there are some French recipes in there. Um, so the middle school kids um, sent their recipes in and most of their recipes are in French. And then there are some families. So some of the recipes in the Africa section and, and the Europe section are in French. But I would say 75% English. Got it. Okay. That's cool. Um, someone said my son would love that. Um, Shanae said that come through fresh skin. Look at you, you getting compliments. You talking about I don't look at me Thank like you girls. I feel like I look crazy, and you never see me anywhere without any eyebrows or mascara. <laughs> <laughs> it is all good. And um, Shanae was saying that she took French for four years and lost it. Well, let's start having conversations in French, Shanae, and and we can get uh Kamora's Prince and mine to be our tutors because uh. <laughs> Let me tell you, he virtual learning today, and he's sitting there and he's responding and raising his hand and he won the game and it's crazy. I'm like, how do you know this? <laughs> and it's the, amazing. The, it's amazing to watch. The thing is, when um, my prince and I, when he was three, not when I was three because he wasn't here, but we went to um, Haiti and I, I kicked off the conversation. They started going deep into French. I said, no, he he's our translator, and yo. I was blown away, but they were blown away too. I'm like, and we saw them in the island. They were like, oh, family, kind of like, you know, you you know our language and stuff like that. So it's just amazing with these immersion schools and just even just taking the time to learn a second language. And that's one tip that I would give when it comes to traveling is that if you're going to a foreign language speaking company, con company, country, to learn at least the common sayings. I had a bad experience in Italy in Milan where my cousin and I, we were going on a shopping trip back in like 2006. And we went to Milan, Florence, Rome, and Switzerland. Well, Milan, they did not, like, we were like, hello, you know, can you help us? You know, and we were shopping and they were like, going to the next person who talked French, like, oh, and you? Like, just kind of ignoring us. And our, yeah. our shopping tour um, person, the guy that gave us the translation, we were just like, okay, yeah, we'll figure it out. 
Um, but since then, even when I went to work, I went to Korea and just traveled um, on personal stuff. I learned the languages in Bay Bay when I went to Korea and in my hue, a female, didn't have no males with me because my, even my team member was a female. Speaking that Korean, they were all, it was just astonished all over it. Like, I think they may have even been flirting with me. I didn't know all that Korean. <laughs> Girl, that my is Korean. I know I say, oh, con su mi that. Oh, uh, I love it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And then Duolingo is a good thing, too, um, because that you can do five minute lessons, um, you know, and just pick up a language and look into some companies. I know my firm, they invest in Rosetta Stone for us, which I need to invest in and actually take them up on that offer. Because um, we I also have a global team, too. Um, so nobody's speaking this language. There's a young um, black girl on Instagram and she's actually pretty good. Like I like her page and she does like um, daily short lessons, but she's really good. Let me get her page because I can actually add it over here while I have you guys chat from my phone. Let me see. Her page mm-hmm. is really, really my French story. You should follow her. She does videos. Yeah, I would love that. Um, Definitely learning another language. um, It's an experience. And I I learned, like, as I got older, it's been a little bit harder because I'm thinking more. But the whole going to a a country and a location that speaks that language and being immersed. And for me, like, my Spanish. Oh, you put me in a Spanish-speaking place. I grew up with, like, my, my sister and brother's half Puerto Rican, but I grew up with a lot of Latinos. I know Spanish, but you ask me now to speak to you, I'm really just thinking about it. But put me in Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Argentina, wherever. Oh, it's on. I, I shock some of my friends on trips. They be like, oh, oh I know you know that much. Yeah, like, it's up there. But I just put it in the back shelf somewhere. <laughs> so okay, That's you- cool. That's the Bronx in you, girl. It is the Bronx in me and just me being a lifelong learner. <laughs> Yeah, habla español un poquito, aprende español en secundario, escuela y universidad, pero no usa aquí. Well, that's not Yo también. <laughs> um, uh, I'm seeing a, your comments today. <laughs> so, yeah, so I know we have a lot of conversation, a lot of good vibes. Is there anything anyone else wants to share? Now, Sora, I know you got something good going on with you. Or any way we could support you, even if it is just following your page or whatever. And no pressure. Um, but I, I do want all of us to, if we have an axe, just put it out there. Um, some people may connect with you on some, anything. Um, so I don't want to make this super long. Um, the next next month, it'll be the fourth Wednesday of, um, of the month at 9 p.m., we're going to have Samaya Mina Alexander come, who I told you a little bit about. Um, she's going to be talking about um, like life insurance and just some other things to plan. Um, she's definitely been super helpful for me. And she'll be here. And then we have a couple of other great people lined up. Really, the schedule is going through the summer of people lined up. Um, so, and even one of my, my, one of my newer mentors was like, uh, Am I going to be on your, your talk show or what? <laughs> so she'll be here soon too. So a lot of great things. Definitely stay tuned in. And, and one thing I want you to know, if you didn't figure it out, and if you're new, new to it, if you are a CP for Mom Talk once, you're going to get the information for the rest of the, the future um, talk shows. Because I want to make it easy for us mamas. Because, you know, we got a lot to do for us to think about and a lot to do. And I don't want you to have to be like, oh, shoot, I ain't RCP. It's in your inbox. <laughs> um, so that's one way I try to make it easier for us. And as you know, this platform is for us. Mom Talk, I created it for moms, those interested in motherhood and those that support us so that we can come together, collaborate, talk about things that we may think we're the only ones going through it, but we're not. Um, and then also provide our expertise so that we can help the next mom. So remember some tips that we got here is to have your to-do list, have a budget um, plan, 
for the fun stuff and the stuff you don't really want to think about so that, you know, you'll be financially fit for that, for those things. And also ask the mama, how are you doing? And listen to what they're saying, um, because that I'm okay could really mean they're not okay. Um, and lend a helping hand when you can. So I am so appreciative of you all being here. If you have not seen my thing for Wednesday, March 31st, um, it's being hosted by my nonprofit, Never Underestimate Knowledge Women in STEM. I will highly encourage you to RSCP for it. it's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash, actually, let me look it up real quick because I did one of those links to make it cute and stuff and I don't remember it right now. <laughs> but it's, um, B-I-T bit dot Lee dot L-Y slash Nook stands for Never Underestimate Knowledge N-U-K dash presents dash woman dash in dash STEM. If you want to follow me on Instagram or Facebook, it's there. Um, link in my bio on Instagram and link in the comment on my most recent post on Facebook. And with that, I'm doing, I'm highlighting some women in STEM that I want the world to know about because when it comes to STEM, it is a male dominated field. I come from a STEM background. I have my bachelor's of science in computer engineering, as well as my master's of science in technology management. And it's, we don't see a lot of us and I want our younger generation to see us. So I had somebody ask me, well, I have a, a child who's only seven. Should, should they come to it? We are, would it be worth them coming just to even see, um, women in, in the field of STEM and them doing it and see what you can do with it. And in my prints, we have, we have young sons too. Um, just seeing that, um, I think it would be inspiring and also hearing from them too and hearing tips, um, I think would be helpful because one is a patent attorney. Another one is a dentist. And uh, the third one is working in a Merck because she's a director there. And she's also has, also has a PhD. So a lot of great things come with your questions and have your little ones come with your questions as well. And it's a free workshop. And um, I just look forward to seeing you there. Please continue to spread the word about it. And there'll be more great things coming. In addition to Mom Talk, um, in addition to my nonprofit, in addition to the products and services I have and all the other things we have going on here. And I know Marcia didn't share. Um, I think she may have had to leave. She's having something too. So Marcia speaks. She has. She's having a conference next week, so check her out. But I am Crystal Galladay, the host of Mom Talk, as well as the Fun Finder for Education. And I'm so happy you decided to join us here live or watching the recording. And I wish you all peace and blessings. Catch us here next month, same time, same place, maybe a different link. So you make sure you went over RCP if you if you didn't do it and you're catching a replay somewhere. But I appreciate you all. And just remember to make that time for you because you are important. Thank you. You're amazing. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Good night, ladies. Good night, girls. Good night, everyone. <laughs>